So I want to act. So when the user presses the show message button, um, I need to access also the different user interface elements. Um, so in um, Py in PyQt, um, the other elements, all of the widgets are accessible from self dot UI, and the UI object is um, it contains all of the widgets that the um, user interface contains. So there's <coughs> There's the frame that I added, the line edit for the message the user can input, and there's all of these different uh, other objects that are uh, created and needed for um, um, the widgets. Okay, so um, so the message I want to get is from the line edit message and this line edit message is the name i had given this uh line edit here is so uh i can go to the qt and so this um oops if i okay. so right now this is not the actual message contained in the in the line edit, this is just the the line edit widget. Um, I can go to Qt and look for a uh, line edit and uh, look for the method that will give me the text that's in the the combo box and not the combo box, mm -hmm. in the line in the line edit itself. And you can see here, there's one that's called text. Um, so that seems reasonable. And it's a property that holds the line at, at its text. So this is exactly what we want. Um, and so the way you can access it, it shows you it is just text with brackets. Um, so back to PyCharm, I can um, just use this method, text. And now I can add my message. Are you guys okay? So now I can restart Dragonfly. And so now when I open my widget and and go down. Um, now, if I um, if I have uh, an input and click on show message, it now shows uh, my message box. So, the, so does everyone understand? Um, you can do you can do the same. Uh, like <clears throat> um, this, I I prefer this because I think it's nicer. Um, but you can do self dot ui dot push button dot Clicked. So this is the signal, and then connect um, 
And then you just give it your um, function. Um, so um, def uh, clicks um, uh, checked. And then I can copy this message, this function, and indent properly. Dot, uh, self -dot. Um, so it's it's a bit similar. So there's you can connect it this way, um, and C plus plus as well. And uh, I know there's um, <coughs> a, a third way where you don't need the widgets, um, like you don't use the this um, in C plus plus. But I don't remember the syntax in Python. Um, at ORS, we mostly use this syntax. Um, and um, before, some some of our um, developers, they use this syntax. But most of us now, we switch to this one. Um, we think this is easier to find and um, easier. Like if when you're searching through code, it's very easy to search for this syntax after. Yeah. Uh, when I, I modify uh, between, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I can modify that yeah. 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 <coughs> mm, um, that might be a good idea. But yeah, it's uh, it's hard. No, it wouldn't be easy to do. It's uh, you would have to know that you changed it. Um, but I guess if you use um this syntax, um, use this syntax, then it will. If you change the name, then afterwards, um. Here you will get errors if you change the name of the widget because now the the old name won't exist anymore. But if you use this, this will always be valid because it's a valid function. And uh, so I think it depends on how how often you change the name of widgets. Um, I don't see why it would change often, but um, yeah, th this is something that you need to keep track of. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, so do you guys want to take a 15 minute break and come back? Okay, so maybe come back at uh, 10, 10? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> okay, so 11, 10. <laughs> Oh, um, like once Dragonfly is loaded, you can press this and it will clear. So then. <laughs> the, um, yeah, so that's the other way is um, usually the last one. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Um, the last one is usually something about the menu, like where we added the menu items. Um. Yeah, so the I, I, so the last one is um is uh, finish adding menu. Um, the other way is if you, you can always just look for the name of your plugin. Um, so mine is called like demo plugin, and um, if there's an error, it will be around here. So that's uh, so if there's an error importing your package or your um, your plugin, you will find an error there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, okay, just, so just, there's one more thing I wanted to check before I start again. Um, sure. um, okay, let's... <clears throat> um, okay, so, um, um, there's lots of different topics that, um, um, I can't cover um in these two days so if you go on to our infinite toolbox which is our app store um uh, you don't need to go on it but like i mean it's just this is just a demonstration but like uh, you can find the um, different um examples of different um features that you can implement so for example this um annotation mouse handlers is a uh, uh, an example of how you can um, create your own like mouse cursors and how to add um, drag and drop connective um, interactions. Um, so, or ha this one, how to associate menu items to actions, how to use a class action, how to use an interface method. So this we talked about yesterday, uh, class callbacks, cursor states, um, so if you have um, a question it's about how to implement something in a plugin, you can probably look in here for examples as well. Uh, so let's see. Um, yeah, so most of these are demo plugins, and we will eventually move them into its own separate section. Uh, but yeah, so this is it. Um, so there, there's um, every and if it's uh, not enough, like if you don't know where to even start looking. Um, so actually, I'll stop this first. All of our Python code that we use for the user interface, um, you can find them in, and I guess maybe you can add it into your project. Um, so to add a folder to your project, um, you can click on op uh, file, open, and then our Python code gets installed in a different folder. Our Python code is installed in a <coughs> hidden folder, and then in program data, um, ORS, Dragonfly with the current version, and Python. And in this folder, um, and then if you do open in current window and select add to currently <laughs> open projects, um, you can browse all of our Python code in here. So for example, if you want to know how we do, um, like, um, how do we set like the scene, like the scene view orientation, um, which is if I load some data sets, like, which is, it controls like the yaw pitch um, and how we connect the signals together. Um, you can <coughs> just go into our Python code and, and now, now that I've added this um, folder, I can search for it. This is called scenes view orientation. I can search for scene views orient. 
orientation. Uh, is that what it's called? Oh, scene view orientation. Um, so so it found the 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 the, the plugin for it. So you can um, so it found a plugin. Um, and so this file is in this location. So now if I just click this uh, target button, it will bring me to the folder with the code. Okay. So just uh, to remind you, the path is in, so file, open. So it's in uh, the C drive, in program data, and then um, ORS, the Dragonfly version, and Python. Okay, uh, and then you open in current window and add currently open projects. Um, and um, at the same time, you can add another one, which is um, the Python all user extensions. Um, so, the plugins when you create either for current user or all users. This is the all user extensions. So you can add this one as well. And so now you should have three different uh, Python uh, projects open. And these are the three that you will need for um, for developing in ORS. Okay. Um, and so if, um, yeah, so um, most of our plugins um, are Python plugins, and um, we haven't done anything to really reinvent the wheel. So if you're doing something that you've seen our software do already, then you can um, find it in our um, Python directory. And you get uh, in it, you will also see, if I go back here, um, you, you get a UI file as well. The the yeah, you get the UI file so that if, you can also just copy paste elements that you like and see what we did with it, and uh, it's easily accessible. Okay, so the so the next few topics I want to talk about is about the interests and callbacks. Um, okay. Are you guys okay? Um, any questions? Okay. Um, so, so this morning I added, uh, an interest and the interest is, um, for selected objects. Um, so if I just add a simple, um, a simple function, let's say, uh, print, um, user change selection. Um, and do, uh, and we just restart Dragonfly. Um, so now what should happen is whenever a user changes, um, um changes the selected object uh, i should get a print user change section oh wait is it not oh um Okay, and speak, and so I need to have the plugin open first. And so now, um, when I change selection, it it will print it. Uh, maybe if I just delete. So now, if I if I select an object or deselect, um, it it will print a new. It will print that the user changed it. Um. And so these interests, 
they are similar to Qt's um, signal and slot system. So here, um, the signal is um, aura selected objects, um, and the slot is this um, method. And the difference between Py between Qt's system and our system um, is that we don't need to know um, other plugins. We need to just know the interest to listen to. And um, so if you have multiple plugins, then you can um, send um, signals between your different plugins using these, uh, the interest. So, um, so to trigger um, to trigger these interests, um, to um, I will show you how to create your own um, uh, your own um, new interest um, signal to listen to. Uh, okay. So here, I will just add a new. Um, in Qt Designer, I'll add a new button, and this will be um, uh, a new button. And um, I will um, add a set um, or trigger um, interest for Jeju and the button name will be um, um, trigger interest then control s to save uh -huh. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> okay. Um, um, 
Okay, so <clears throat> you need to rerun the bat file um, to generate the new uh, Python UI file. And so now if I go to my UI main form, uh, <clears throat> you should see my new, <coughs> uh, my new button. And it's here, it's trigger interest. Now if I go back to my uh, main form, I can now add, oh uh, wait, what's this? Okay, this is a different name for me. Hold on. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so this was, I don't need this. Um, this was an example. Okay, so now I can add the, the logic for this new button. So, so from before we need, um, or like before, like the previous button, we need to add this IQT slot with the Boolean. And as you know, the syntax for the click signal is on um, the name of the widget, which is push button. Um, and I'll go back to Qt to just copy and paste the name. So it's on widget name clicked and checked equal false. Okay. Oh, um, you can, uh, okay. So, um, yesterday I showed you that, um, the working context, you can observe it through the context observer and the, this context, um, contains all, um, um <clears throat> contains the interest um and um they are stored as entities so you have um the current view the um the global state the default global state the layout the status text sorry uh yeah um view under cursor so these are all the different interests um, there are and they are stored in entities, and so, um, <clears throat> so if you want to create your own interest, you just need to um, um, set the entity or set an entity in the in um, the working context. So um, to get the working context, you need to import it. Um, and from yesterday, we saw that it's, the working context is in the ORS libraries. Oh, actually, it's already imported for you. You don't need to import it again. Uh, so that's good. So it's in the working context. So we can copy that and then paste here. So working context, and can set current uh oops sorry it's a set named entity oh uh, yeah set current entity yeah okay so um the arguments for this uh class in PyCharm, you can press F12, and it'll bring you to um, the. It will bring you to where we define the method. Um, so you can see there's three parameters to this class. Um, there's the instance, um, which is the plugin. 
the entity class, which is a string, and a value, which is uh, another string. So it's basically, a, so our um, interests are basically stored in a dictionary. Okay, and you can jump back and forth between files, um, like different locations um, in, Py in PyCharm with Control Alt and then left or right. Um, so left will bring you back to the previous cursor position and right will bring you back to, um, it will bring you forward in time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh, I guess because yesterday I changed my key map to uh, visual key. Okay, so maybe not control F12, maybe not F12, <laughs> um, but I think. But I think control Alt left and right should work. Okay. Um, yeah, so it takes these three parameters. <clears throat> okay, so the so to so in the main form you can get access to the to the plugin by um, doing self dot get implementation. So the plugin is self dot get implementation. And this plugin is um, <clears throat> the instance associated with this um, with this class, um, and <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay. So the context. Um, so if I pass, uh, I can pass either the plugin or none as my first argument for the instance. And if I pass none, it will just use the current context. But, but, um, but since I know that I want to run in the same context as the plugin, I pass in my plugin. <coughs> and then um, the new interest, well, um, I can give it a name. So it can be Jeju interests. And um, the uh, value will be um, it will be uh, um, it can be any string that you want. So for now, I will just put. Uh, Let's see, I guess I can put a counter. So I can put like a counter. And so now every time I um, will push this button, I can increment the counter by one. And then we'll know how many times we will trigger this interest. Um, so in, uh, in Python, um, you can do plus equal one, so counter plus equal one. 
um, <clears throat> and to get access to the um, actually sorry um, you can get you can get access to the ver the global variable by calling it by calling global or you can always define this as a um, a class variable um, or an instance variable there's many ways of doing this um, and um, to convert it to a string there's many different ways um, we can convert um, objects to strings using the str or you can um, you can use um, <coughs> string literals in Python if you put an F before or okay it's maybe you can um, do something like this and in between so if you have a very long string um, you can do something like this and um, put like this these two brackets it's a placeholder so then you can format it later and if you put for example um counter now um like um format number um counter has been pressed oh. um like python will re replace these brackets um with um um, with the first argument and so if you have multiple placeholder then it will go in order you can also give them names so if i name this a and b i can say a is equal to counter and b is equal to counter and um this string will um and Python will replace um, this with uh, whatever is in counter. Um, so just as an example to, to demonstrate, mm -hmm. um, if I start a console, if I say a is equal to one, and oops, sorry, not a. If I say counter is equal to one, and then just um, run this string or this uh, line. Um, so you can see that um, uh, Python replaced this with count with counter and replaced this with uh, with this other value. So maybe um, maybe I can do b is equal counter plus one. And and so by giving it a name, um, you can just keep reusing it. Um, so this is sometimes useful. Um, when you need to do um, like um, very long um, string, um, very long strings. So, for example, if you want to um, parse your um, C++ headers and you have a very specific template, then um, using this it can be powerful because then you can just say like my class name is this and my um, uh, arguments. And it will yeah, parse it. Um, it'll be easier for the reader to know um, what should be in these um, variables. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, so for now, we can just use a simple one of string counter. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Um... Uh... 
and yes. <coughs> <coughs> Yes, and so now I can listen to this interest um, by using the at interest the creator in my plugin. Use the same name, and now uh, I can uh, let's see, um, give a name to this function. So it's Jeju interest interest triggered here you can give it any name and um the um and when it's triggered it will give you an object no an object it will give you back this a string um that uh what's called as the counter Okay. And so now, um, what I want to do is uh, update <coughs> the um, the text box with our um, counter. Um, so that we can see um, how many times this interest has been triggered. So um, I can ask this plugin to give me my main form, which is my user interface, by um, simply calling the method. Um, we have a method that's automatically generated for you, um, and it's in the parent class, but it's called get main form. Um, and if not, uh, yeah, it's called get main form. Um, and so to get the main form, to get your user interface, it's just self dot get main form. And here, mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes the main form can be none, so you need to just check that the main form is not none, and that it's not that it does exist. And um, if it exists, um, um, so right now PyCharm will not be able to auto help you with the auto completion, um, but we can access the the text, the text inputs, and we know from Qt Designer that this text input is called line edit message. And so I can copy the name from over here. Um, and set the text to just counter.
maybe yeah I'm sorry Okay, so now in uh, Dragonfly, in this one, um, when I open my Jeju plugin, and <clears throat> uh, so now when um, Oh, I have an error in my, uh, <coughs> oh, okay. So I see now um, that I have an error, and that's because I, um, if you read it, it says missing one required positional argument counter. Uh, okay, it's because, um, Right, because the interest does not take any argument. So, in fact, uh, um, this is not correct. Um, the way you, can, you should get counter is by now asking the working context, and you can um, get the current entity. Current entity. Um, so now, since you are in the plugin, you can just pass in self. And the entity name, which was n, which was Jeju interest. <coughs> yes. Um, so if I open it now, yeah. yeah. Do you do you need me to come back here? Are you okay? Um. So now when I trigger an interest, um, um, you can see that the counter is incrementing, and uh, this is not, uh, and this is no longer using the QT signals. This is using our own internal signals to update um, this counter. Um, so if you need to, pa if you need to um, um, pass different signals across different plugins or different contexts, not contexts, but uh, um, yeah, just across different plugins, and you can use um, the signal system. And so if you have so if you develop uh, three plugins for customers, um, but they only have one or two of them, then um, when you emit the signal, only the ones that exist will receive it. You don't need to depend on um, like your other plugins to be there. <clears throat> 